Tommy, I am intrigued by these big beams that you brought in here, yeah. but more intrigued by what you're planning on building with it. It's going to be a wine rack. It'll have two panels, one on each side and one in the back, and no door on the front. Inside, we'll build these racks right here, four, like a ladder that will slide in, and we can store wine bottles on those. Yeah. And up top, we'll make a place to hang the wine glasses. And am I seeing like a big beefy wooden top? Yeah, we'll build all of this out of this reclaimed lumber right here. So what's the story behind this? All right, well, this is one of the beams out of many that we save when we rip down projects or demo projects. I like to save old wood because I just like the tightness of the grain. So when you say beam, would this have been sort of a big 8-inch thick, what, 10-inch high? This was an 8 by 10 beam, and it was, might have been used for a diagonal brace or a collar tie of some type. Yeah, so it's aged out here. But when you sliced into it down to the nice wood, and what's species is this? This is white pine. You can still see remnants of the old mortise and tenon, even a peg too. Yeah, the peg's there and a piece of the tenon that went in there is still there. So where do you want to start? Let's have you cut two pieces for the top, about 24 inches long. Then we'll run those pieces through the surface plane. So we want to glue up these two pieces to make up the top, and while the glue's drying, we can work on the rest of the cabinet. All right, and what do you want to do, fasten it with anything? We're just going to glue it. It's a pretty small top. We really don't need any fasteners because this is a pretty wide joint. Make sure you tighten those clamps enough to hold the boards together, but not so tight that you squeeze the glue out. We'll rip our four legs down to two by twos. Then we'll run those through the surface planer as well. I have to turn them, plane down each side, and also make sure that they stay square. Let me show you what we're going to use to make up our sides for the cabinet. First, it starts with this wide old floorboard that we salvaged. Look at that, 17 <laughs> inches wide, that's old. Yeah, it's nice stuff, hard to get that today. Right. And I like all the distress on it, so we're gonna use that. On the legs, we have the two by two legs, and in between, we have our rails that are gonna go one on the bottom, mm -hmm. one on the top. All right. Now the panel will be cut to fit in dados. On the legs, we want to put a stop dado so you don't see it down at the bottom, mm -hmm. and then a continuous dado on the rails. Okay. Before we cut these old boards to size, it's good to see if we have any old nails in there. So we'll run our metal detector over the board. Oh, yeah. Uh, an old cut nail. That would do some damage to our blade. It sure would. across a lot of old lumber on those houses you work on, Tommy. How do you know what to save, what to get rid of, and what are you looking for? Well, I'm looking for the grain of the wood. I'm looking for the knots that are nice and tight and stable in the wood. I'm looking for patina. And a lot of the stuff, though, is, uh, looks pretty beat up to the naked eye. I mean, is it all created equal, or...? Well, I like the old, tight grain. It really takes a stain and a finish really nice. You don't get the blotchiness out of it. It takes a little more effort and time to clean that board up, but I think the look is worth it. Now, because you're not going to see the back of the cabinet, we're going to make that panel out of a piece of half-inch birch. The sides and back are too wide to cross-cut on the chop saw, so I'm going to use my homemade sled and cut them on the table saw. Tommy, how hard do you want me to hit this panel with the sander? 
I don't want you to hit it too hard. I want to leave some of the imperfections of the wood there. With all of our pieces cut, we can start assembling our sides using pocket screws. Okay. Okay, let me get one screw in here. All right, now we're ready to make the rest of the racks. I've already made one, and these are for the wine bottles. And the wine bottles are gonna sit in here, the next are gonna sit out the front. I have to make three more of these. I've already cut and milled all the pieces down for the racks out of the same old beam, down to one by one. I put them together using a floating tenon. So we'll put a mortise in the end of each one of these. and a mortise in the piece that goes across the front and the back. All right, to make the rack for the wine glasses, I took a piece of wood and I ran it through the table saw, beveled it at 15 degrees. Then I eased the edge with a hand plane to smooth it out and bevel it. Then I took a piece of three quarter inch stock and glued it right to the middle of it to make an upside down T. We'll then take this bracket right here that I'm making up and we'll put these together like this. And once we have them all the way around, we'll be able to slide the wine glasses right in that slot. Nice. Go ahead. Pull up. All right. Nice. All right, all I'm gonna do is get some finish on it and we'll be all set. All right, I gotta go work with Richard, but I'll check back in on you. Okay. Look at you, what a magician, Tommy. I love it. You like it? I like Beautiful. the way you finished it, Tommy. What'd you choose? This is just a white barn poly with no stain. I put about five coats on. Mm -hmm. On the top, I used a black stain with a high gloss white barn poly. Good contrast. Is this nice for choice. us? It's for you, enjoy. This is uh, a yeah, toast yeah. to you guys. You know what's going on here, Richard? You got that figured out there, wine boy? Ooh, is that a chateau? It's certainly oaky. I'm oaky. So you like my suggestion? That's, it is very good. Well, just so you know, Bozo, it's my box oh, wine. Oh, really? oh, oh, he boxed you. You don't know anything. You're a wine you, you knew that already, though. <laughs> Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button. Make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.